Hello, I'm Toya. And I'm Robert. And this is our Upbeat Moments. Well, I'm currently having an Upbeat Moment, little lovey, here with my baby at the end of our wonderful garden with the River Avon flowing by. And I feel fortunate and privileged to be here and be here with you. And we're about to be joined by an aeroplane. Sometimes it's my brother. <laughs> And he comes down very low and phones us. Uh, but we'll, see, we'll soon find out. If it is, I'll turn the camera around. Well, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? It's a stunning day, little lovey. On the way to being an English summer at the moment. Well, we've had a fantastic week. Uh, we saw Robert Plant and Amazing Grace. <sighs> At the Cheltenham Jazz Festival in the Big Tent. He was phenomenal. The whole band were phenomenal. Now, the interesting thing is, for an international level band, very rarely does, do the members of the band live within seven miles of each other, which they do just up the road a bit. And it means they can get together regularly and just hang out. And I think that is a really good recipe for a fantastically well gelled band. The band has chemistry personally and musically. And the sound with this band, which I think Mr. Plant focuses very strongly on, the quality of the sound is exceptional, even even for a frontline band. And um, Tony Kelsey, that one of the main guitarists, I mean, he's just breathtaking. And we were talking, because every time Tony did a solo, which was most songs, but he would tune down not just the low E, but also the, the next string long is A, isn't it? Tony would do baritone guitar. Um, it's just amazing, just the most incredible sound. It was so exciting. And then the next day we went back to the Cheltenham Jazz Festival to see Jeremy Stacy and his brother and his band. Jeremy and Paul is essentially their band, the Royal Scammers, and they play the music of Steely Dan. Superbly, may I say. Absolutely brilliant. It was a beautiful afternoon event. I loved it. And then then we watched the fantastic documentary about Iggy Pop and the Stooges. One of the best rock docs that I've seen. Often the rock docs, um, a bit. But this one, I had a sense of the Stooges, the Igamas, and the power and influence of that band from 67 to 1973, mostly ignored, mostly disliked, and the record company didn't like them. So from one point in the world, probably ignominy and a failure, yeah. except for the legacy and the impact on other, other musicians and bands. What I really loved about this was the purity of Iggy Pop. He was so pure to what he believed in. And it, it just filled me with a sense of calm because he did not compromise. And they were hated in the beginning, but they were so charismatic yeah. and their riffs got better and better and better and they stuck with it. And then I remember I, I had a warehouse along with um, Eve, uh, who was Adamant's ex-wife, wonderful man called Keith, who drove the warehouse and its kind of industry, and a, a music journalist from the NME um, called John. We all shared this warehouse together, and Iggy Pop and the Stooges came to rehearse. And this was about 1978 into 79. I know it wasn't 79 because I was filming Quadrophenia for most of that year. Uh, and the noise was so incredible in this warehouse. It was Battersea in London, near the power station, right by Queenstown Road railway station. And complaints about the volume were coming from three miles away and no one could find the source of the noise. They were incredibly loud and fantastic and lovely people. John Cale was there working with Iggy and helping to produce them. They, I think, were working on The Idiot. It was so exciting. And um, we went out to dinner with Iggy. Iggy invited us round to his apartment um, in Kensington to have supper with him. Lovely, lovely people. And when they packed up to go, Iggy had a rehearsal guitar and his assistant said, we can't take this with us. So he handed it to me. Now, like an absolute kind of 
idiot person, there was an AAA pass there for Iggy Pop's show and it peeled off. I've got it somewhere, I've pressed it between two books, but I should have made sure it stayed there. It's not an easy guitar to play, it's not an expensive one, but that has pride of place in my office. Although I don't know uh, Iggy personally, I did meet him in 1980 at the Irving Plaza in New York, where Iggy and David Bowie came down to see the League of Gentlemen. They were rocking out there. And I found Iggy a very charismatic man. He's phenomenally charismatic uh, and just so true to himself. Yeah. I, I'm fascinated by him. It's that truth to me that is what resonates so much about everything he's done, that he, he just hasn't veered away or compromised. He's just remained adamant that this is who he is, accept it or take a hike. <laughs> All right then. So I've got a few other upbeats. Uh, I'm going to be really busy in June, Bug. I'm the narrator on a movie and we're narrating it in June. And this is an American movie being shot in Iowa. Uh, and uh, uh, that's all I can say, but I'm the narrator. I, I can't wait. And I've just been asked to narrate a 26 part series that's quite groundbreaking. And it's about showing the latest generations how to experience empathy, not in a patronizing wow. way. It, it's been um, written and evolved through psychologists uh, and I'll be the narrator on that and the character voice on that. Well, I'm mainly the character voice uh, and it's about um, kind of signaling what empathy is and why we need it. So it's going to be a very, very busy June because we're doing Glastonbury, Isle of Wight and many, many more. Cheese and Grain, Froome, Bridport. Uh, we've just got so many gigs. So lots more upbeat moments. Yay! Hooray! And I'm just about to sneeze and <coughs> cough with all the wonderful pollens coming up. Can you do it in, in proper timing? <coughs> <coughs> yes, dear, I probably could manage that. Lots of love from Toya. And from Robert. Oh, and tomorrow we'll have a vintage Sunday lunch. And then, sorry, is it Wednesday, your birthday? It's Thursday. Thursday. And then next Saturday, I've become a pensioner. Lots of love from Toya. And from Robert. <laughs>